and what we should know about that average uh, here's the average blended human and the speed of sound through them well none of us are blended um, and we have we're all separated into different substances which reflect or transmit differently things that are pure water are like perfect transmitters you know, the bladder rarely do you see echoes within it unless something's wrong um, if it's pure water type urine your beam is just going straight through but air bone fat all very good reflectors and we use some different terminology that you'll encounter over and over and over again that are all just relative to each other um, so something that's anechoic no echoes basically is going to be completely fluid filled blood vessels uh, the urinary bladder and then um, we use the terms hyper and hypoechoic as descriptors for basically bright and dark. And sometimes in my quest for simplicity, I pause being like, oh, I'm supposed to use the fancy name for bright because I just like saying bright and dark. Because why not be simple about things? Um, but uh, bone, air, fat, bright, i.e. hyperechoic. And then things that are a mixture of liquid and solid will be somewhat hypoechoic and we'll use descriptive comparative terms. So uh, one of the ways uh, in which this physics translates into reality for um, imaging for our patients, which uh, organ, and this is a little bit of a guess what I'm thinking question, but which organ do you think has more water content? The liver or the kidney yeah it's your great filtration right filled with vessels everywhere to just filter blood 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 and so you'll get used to seeing uh, in your right upper quadrant shots here's my liver here's my kidney my kidney looks darker my liver looks brighter and then one day you're gonna be like something's wrong with this what's why does this picture look different and it's you're gonna see a, a kidney that looks brighter than the liver so why? And that'll be like a time when you're imaging either child with known um, congenital kidney disease and fibrosis, or they come in for like their first you know, decompensation and you're diagnosing it. Um, but those are like some of the ways that these uh, terms translate into reality. So if I ever hear you guys say, well, the kidney looks relatively hyperechoic to the liver, the translation and all that is basically about water content. So, um, Muscle is a pretty dark substance with some bright lines through it. Muscle is very water heavy in terms of its content, right? Um, the difference between uh, steak and beef jerky is just water content, but the difference in size is very dramatic. Uh, and so, so muscle is relatively hypoechoic. In terms of hyper, Echoic things. Anyone have a guess as to what uh, pathology we're looking at here? Fracture. Yeah, definitely is a fracture. Now, what kind of bone do you think it is? What part of the body? So. Yeah, yeah. Curved uh, structure that we just don't image that many other curved, um, smooth bones other than the skull. So that's a minimally displaced skull fracture. And now that we've had a bit of talk about these different terms you could use and different artifacts that exist, I'll turn this image over to you guys to describe it to me in ultrasound physics kinds of terms. Yeah, awesome, so you're seeing those reverberating lines on the left, great. Imagine you're just describing it to a blind person. What do you see? I can't see the screen. Okay. 
So you're, you're doing too much translation. You're labeling soft tissue and bone. I just want you to describe why you think those things are what they are. Especially like layers of hypo, hyperechoic structures. Okay, different layers of hypo and hyperechoic structures. If I was not looking at the screen, I might be like, so muscle? I'm a very hyperechoic line. Awesome. Awesome. On the left side of it, there's some integration of it. Right side, some darkness under it. Okay. Great. Um, a very hyperechoic line with some reverberation, uh, and then some areas with maybe shadowing. If you describe that to me, I'd say, are we talking about bone? Right. So it's a ways of learning, like, just like in radiology, when they talk about x-ray things, it takes a little while to translate all that jumbo into your clinical work. But if you were to say that phrase to me, I would know what's the picture. Okay. Can you guys explain what you're seeing here to me in medical ultrasound terms and physics terms? Circular structure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're still doing a little bit of the. Um, Medical upgrading, <laughs> which is which is great, is what you do in real practice, right? That's a fluid filled structure because it is unequally yeah. awesome. And then Michelle brought up a, a artifact that we haven't talked about yet: uh, posterior acoustic enhancement. People remember that from the textbook. That one makes sense. Basically, the concept, one, which we'll get to, that uh, if your beam has to go through a lot of solid tissue. It loses energy, it attenuates as it goes through. But if the beam next to it is going through just anechoic, perfect transmission material, when those two beams get deep to that structure, you're going to have a very bright, high energy beam here and a less high energy beam here that looks dark. So you have this brightening behind the anechoic substance. <laughs>